Hello and welcome back to uh, Panzer Garage. Garage. Uh, another vehicle I've been building lately in conjunction with some of the others is the um, Panzer Camp Wagen 3 uh, with the 3.7cm um, gun but it's the Tausch Panda, um, the dive tank essentially, amphibious tank for Operation Sea Lion for the invasion of Britain. Uh, this is a Cyber Hobby Kit, 6717. Uh, an interesting kit, um, a very interesting subject. Um, it is a Mark F uh, with the 3.7 gun instead of the 5cm gun. And as I said, the, the T stands for Tausch Punza, which is uh, an amphibious tank basically, a um, diving tank. Um, and it was designed to drive on the bottom of the sea for entry onto the beach. Um, up to 15 meters um, and they took a very different approach to the Allies later in the war when the Allies most of their tanks for Normandy were floating tanks um, the Germans sort of did both so they had a few variants such as the, the, the PZ-38T that um, was able to float they had some floats designed for that um, and but this one in particular was put over the side and drove along the bottom of the um, of the seabed and was quite successful in testing uh, of course the invasion of Britain never occurred uh, however later in the war well not long after that the cancellation these were used in the Balkans uh, to cross some rivers um, although modified a little uh, with the shorter hose of only three and a half meters and um, also, they were used to cross the rivers to, at the start of the Barbarossa campaign. So, certainly not a paper tiger, uh, or paper tank I should say, certainly not a paper tank. Um, a real vehicle that was used, and then after they were used for crossing the rivers, they just reverted back to normal tanks. Um, so that's pretty much um, uh, that part. So. It was they were, they were waterproof. They essentially had uh, the exhaust system was a one-way valve, and um, this little thing here floated to the surface, um, where the air intake flowed into the vehicle, and then out through the valve system at the rear. Um, and there was also a tracking device uh, and radio system sort of thing in the top where they could communicate to the ships uh, above. Uh, the rubber seals were fitted. Um, you know, around to the front, around the, across the gun, and particularly around uh, the traverse of the turret. And uh, once on land, these were actually had small charges in them, and they blew those, and then they came off, so they would be able to just uh, dump what they needed to go, and then fight as a normal tank. Um, its maximum depth was 15 meters. Uh, 168 of them were produced all up, so quite significant considering you don't see a lot of these in the sort of model fraternity, you know, considering how many were produced and, and that they actually were used in combat. Um, and as I said, in 41 they were mo modified again so that they could cross the rivers. Um, this kit is Cyber Hobby, um, it, it's essentially a Panzer III kit with the extra seals and um, DS style piping that was used. So I'll have a quick look on the side before we look at what I've done so far. So here we have the DS components that you can see there that sort of sit on top of the vehicle with some other modifications to the exhaust system and um, that. So uh, essentially uh, end up with the kit basically. So I'll have a look at um, the instructions quickly. I'm not going to labour through these because it's, I find it probably a little bit tedious. But the, um, the instructions, typical sort of dragon, you've got a lot of blue on there that's not used. Um, typical instructions from dragon, quite busy um, as you can see. Uh, start off with the hull and the wheels migrate up to the um, fenders and the detail on the fenders the rear of the vehicle so it's a, it's a typical sort of Panzer 3 Panzer 4 construction from Dragon in that it's all done in components you've got the hull the hull um, and then you've got the fenders that you've got to put together the rear of the um, 
top of the superstructure, then the forward top of the superstructure, and then the turret. So it's quite busy, and I think from the downside, uh, particularly if we look, say, here, when you're trying to put all these components together, yeah, it can be a little bit fiddly, and before you glue it all together, when, you know, you need to ensure that it, uh, it fits properly. You, generally, you have a couple of little fitting issues on the side back here. I've tried to get everything together, and I found that you know, unlike say Tamiya, Dragon, it's nice that Dragon have a lot, a lot of detail, uh, but I, I would think it would be nice if they could simplify this a little bit more just to make it um, a bit easier to sort of build and put together. Uh, the turret, no problem at all, and then of course you've got pretty much just one painting um, um, option, which is for the testing centre in 1940 to put together. Um, I did find this, this is DS, and as you see it's, um, as you can see in here, it, it's not just sort of quite straight, there's some bends and things in that in there. You know, that's very, very difficult to do unless you sort of somehow put some type of wire down inside, inside it, but uh, there's not a lot of room to try and fit wire in there, which I tried to do. So I ended up having to glue it quite carefully, but it doesn't mould like you sort of see here, being the DS, it's, it's flexible sort of rubber like the tracks, but uh, trying to get it to sit in exactly that type of frame, there needs to be some type of wire or something inside it so that you could actually um, make it mendable to, to what you're after. But you'll see that now with, uh, with the kit. Oh, and it comes with um, DS tracks. I tossed up whether using Frul tracks or DS. Uh, I decided to go at this stage with the DS tracks uh, to see uh, how we go, um, and I'll explain why uh, in a minute. So here we have the kind of the completed kit minus wheels, um, undercoated in sort of their Panzer Primer colour, uh, and, and as I can see, I've got a a problem on the drawing here where it's um, it's cracked, which I'll need to go back over, and that's on the DS component. But that's okay. Um, it's a, quite a delicate little thing. You've got some wires coming down here, um, and you've got the depth marker here, which is quite um, fragile to put on. Um, but this is what I was talking about here, the DS component here to try and glue in. I managed to get a piece of wire into this last butt here uh, about probably um, a centimetre and a half in, which means I could do that bend, but putting it anywhere else was virtually impossible for me to do. Um, but other than that, the, the standard bottom is pretty much, the standard hull is pretty much the, the same, the normal Panzer III. Um, and then you've just got the additions, like the guards at the front, um, the DS uh, rubber components um, as an additional uh, onto the side of the vehicle. But I found that the hardest part was getting the hose on, and I had to glue that onto its supports one section at a time. And the problem that I found, because everything is quite bendable, you'll see that support bracket there. It's, it's bending just through under the strain of the bend. Um, and you've got the same on the other side as well. These sort of stick out where they shouldn't really sort of stick out. If you uh, look there, you'll see it's a slightly bent, it's not straight. So that's because of the pressure being put on by the hose and there's no way I've found to really alleviate that. The other problem that I had was with the turret, with the hose going into the turret, I had to end up gluing the turret on because otherwise the turret would lift off and sit up there. So unless you put some kind of significant weight, which I tried to play around with, but if you've got some heavy lead or something like that, you could probably do it that way. But I thought, well, the last thing I want is for it to turn because it would... Uh, potentially break things off. So what I ended up doing was just gluing it on so that I know that everything is sitting in place um, and that it's got less likelihood 
um, of it breaking. But certainly a very interesting topic. Uh, if you ever come across one for sale uh, on the internet by cyber from Cyber Hobby, um, certainly it's worthwhile having in your stash or having in your case, I think. Um, the next stage of this is to uh, just tidy up some things on there and then um, to undercoat it in black for shading and then this will be um, Panzer Grey um, as well on, on top. So, and, and you know, with, with weathering, being in seawater, you know, and with testing and things like that, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put some uh, rust and things like that on there. Um, there are there is significant amount of PE, a reasonable amount of PE, I should say. Um, the problem with something like this, where it's got it's so busy, um, you work in one area and you knock something off. So these little mud flaps here at the back, are PE, and I keep knocking them off all the time, uh, even though I try to leave them till later. <laughs> so undoubtedly they'll get knocked off again during my painting, because every time I tend to pick this thing up, something tends to fall off. But definitely worthwhile having, um, definitely a great subject. Um, I'm going to build this with the view of it coming out of the water and just onto the beach. So before they've blown everything, but it's got the gear, the kit on there, like all the shovels and all that sort of stuff on there. So it's, it could potentially fight if it needed to. But let's be common sense here. They'd secure the beachhead with infantry first before that these things would cross. So it's going to have a, a, an element of security for it anyway. Um, it's not as if they're going to be fighting coming out of the water. Um, so um, we'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to doing the next stage on this. Um, the only thing that I would suggest too is you've got decals that do the mark on the outside here for the depth. Um, one thing to consider if you get this is to work out where the decals sit and then paint underneath it because you know after you sprayed it, it's going to be painted to grey. Um, paint that area white before you put the decals on there. Um, most of you will probably do that anyway. But if you're if you're relatively inexperienced in, in modelling, then uh, you'd you'd want some white base under there so that the decal actually sits well and you get the right colours. Um, but other than that, um, see me for the next review, and I'll have it. Um, I'll have the. Uh, um, the pans are grey on it's, I'm not going to bore you to death with just putting a, a black coat on and having another video alrighty well this is the Panzer 3 um, T and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video ok just a bit of an update from the painting so far uh, at the moment um, I have painted this in uh, Revell uh, tank grey uh, I ran into a few snags which I thought I would raise now um, here we have it so far, um, as you can see the decals are on, most of it is uh, painted in tank grey, it has had one filter put on it, a blue filter put on it, a slight blue filter as well, the uh, tracks are done, um, but I ran into a little snag and you can see on here uh, some parts that needed to re be repaired that aren't painted, uh, originally when you see the last video, um, being in its undercoat in its primer, uh, this hose was attached to these points. The problem was uh, when I was painting it <laughs> one of them snapped and then because of the sheer tension of this which is made out of DS uh, on the rest of them the rest of them snapped one by one. The plastic's just too thin. Um, I emailed Cyber Hobby about it to try and get replacements. Um, interestingly they didn't even bother to reply let alone send me anything so uh, I've got nothing from them so what I ended up doing was having to take the tops to, to pull these, these apart from the uh, from the hose itself um, and then replace the poles with a slightly thicker uh, plastic um, rod uh, it's just slightly th thicker than the other one but it is uh, so you won't really be out of scale uh, too much um, looking at some original photos um, but what should happen now is that I'm not sure I'll actually stick that back on top because I'm worried it's going to snap again having tested them um, again. So what I might actually do is leave it in this configuration not being attached. And you know what? That's okay. 
The reason why is that that hose would have been attached at some point anyway. So before it went into the water and when it came out of the water at the other side, because I would have stripped all this hosing system off uh, for battle, um, that's those hoses would have been disconnected. So you don't actually really need them on there. I think it looks okay sitting there uh, with the assumption that it's being put on. Uh, so you could still model this prior to going in or just recently coming out of the water um, and you would be okay. Uh, so I think I might leave it at that. Uh, just a couple of additional points. I'm, I'm modeling this to be as if it'd come out of the water and they reattached some of the gear uh, but I left the jack off um, at this stage so if I can find a figure in the future when I may be looking at this in a diorama I might look at a figure that I can use to carry the jack and then put it on like during a beachhead or something like that uh, which would make it look okay um, whilst they try and strip the other gear off so I don't want to really take away too much from the model um, in, in stripping gear off it because then I'd defeat the purpose of actually um, setting it up as a Tausch Panzer. Um, as I sort of suggested in the last video, this was sprayed um, tank grey, Revell tank grey. Uh, underneath the decal here, that is white. I still have got a little bit of tidying up to do here from the other side, uh, which I will do. Uh, it's had one blue filter applied. As you can see, I've, I've put on um, I've made some effort to um, expose some of the uh, undercoat there so that kind of looks like real rust uh, more rust will go on later in terms of effect but you know what not a lot um, you know these would have been pretty new you know put into the water in 1941 um, you wouldn't have had a lot of rust on these to be to be totally honest with you uh, that would have come potentially later um, what is interesting though I find is the Ravel colour so for this I'd use Ravel uh, 78 tank grey and um, um, it is quite blue in its natural outset so I didn't want to use too much of a blue filter uh, it actually comes out looking quite faded uh, which, in, technically speaking, it probably shouldn't have been because these tanks uh, would have, you know, 1941 would have been quite, um, still quite new. Um, however, you know, you could argue that it, it could be the leftover from the salt effect or anything like that, so that's okay. Um, I am going to put salt effect on this at the end, at the very end, which you'll see as well. Um, interestingly, though, I brought along my Panzer. 35T that's been completed earlier and when you have a look at the colours um, it is actually quite different so the Panzer 35T is done in Humbrol uh, tank grey 67 uh, and it's quite and it's darker and it's blacker um, from my research I would argue if you're looking at it from a technical perspective this colour is more correct than the Revell one the Ravel one seems to be too blue. Um, for my research, Panzer Grey is actually quite dark and closer to a black. Unfortunately, in some of the photos that you see, um, you um, quite often um, are looking at what can be considered a blue tinge in some of the colour photos from Germany, from the German effort of the war. That tends to be because of the film they use, which is an Agfa film. And uh, whereas um, the Allies used Kodak, Kodak was a more advanced film at the time, Agfa wasn't. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Agfa film had real problems um, with the red spectrum of light. And therefore, uh, you'll see sometimes the colours in, when you look in some of the books don't look quite right. They often look colourised when they're actually taken in colour. Um, the greys will look, the dark colours will look bluer, particularly the greys. Um, so just be aware of that when you're looking at German sourced photos from the war because they were more than likely taken with German Agfa film and they had that problem and it wasn't rectified till later. So that's why you end up getting the blue tinge, not because of the blue of the colour. Um, it's actually quite a dark colour and as I said closer to black. 
but bear in mind I wanted to do this in the Revell to see what it looked like anyway I'm not perturbed not too worried about it um, the the tracks um, I've pretty much completed they were the tracks that came with the vehicle um, the um, uh, magic tracks they turned out to be quite good took a lot of painting and a lot of effort to get them to look like that though a lot of different colors the base color is um, black and then um, um, in, uh, Humbrol's uh, track color uh, put on top of it and uh, then just different sort of layers of browns and and light rusts and stuff put on there as well and again don't go I wouldn't go overly zealous on the rust thing um, you know this will actually end up looking a bit more muddy because when I've finished with it the intent is to to, to, to make it look like as if it's come off the surface of, of sorry the um, the bottom of the sea so it'll have um, you know a little bit more mud uh, sea mud uh, on it as well and maybe you know like at the front here a little bit of salt um, uh, effect uh, as well so you'll see that too so when you're doing things like this just think of the environment that it's going to go in have a look at you know I come from Australia our beaches are, are quite nice and sandy and light color um, whereas quite often say if you look at around the area of uh, the British coastline it quite often is dark and more muddy in some areas so you do a little bit of sort of research and sort of think you know what what's likely the color that it's going to be and then um, have a go from there but I'm kind of happy where it's come from so far you know as I said I wouldn't recommend um, you you putting the hose onto the uh, on, on, onto these holders here um, it puts a lot of stress on the plastic I think even if you pulled it off you know don't be surprised when in a couple of months it breaks um, it would have been nice in hindsight for Cyber Hobby to mould this hose in DS around some kind of bendable wire. Um, I tried threading wire through the middle of it, but I could only go down about three or four centimetres before it kept popping out the side. So um, it would have been nice for them to do that. So then it becomes a bit more pliable and then you can sort of glue it on top and it would have been, life would have been a lot easier. So anyway, stay tuned for the next uh, update on this. All right. Okay, welcome back to the final reveal. Um, we left you in the last video, uh, it having been base coated and with the blue filter. Um, now we've applied um, some of the dark washes, um, some uh, powders, mainly using clear fix, particularly around the wheels, and some lighter powders on top, mainly to um, do, mainly to achieve a you know, a bit of a salty type finish um, as well and you'll also see a bit of light rust applied in various places as well again just to simulate that it they would have used this vehicle not only operationally if, if it went ahead but um, you know for a lot of training purposes so it's mainly to sort of you know the, the vehicle's been in and out of water a lot I've done a lot of training in it. Uh, salt is quite, as we all know, is quite corrosive, particularly back in the 40s. You know, paint wasn't as good as etc. of what it is now. So, you know, it, it's quite reasonable to say that if they were doing training for a while and testing things and things like that, that um, um, it would have uh, had some light rust on the vehicle. Now, I've modeled this in the context of as if the operation did go ahead. So again, you would have had all the training on top of that, and then of course the operation itself. So again, it's quite feasible to say that, given the nature of the time period, um, and a lot of these pansers that were used were some of the older ones uh, that were converted. So um, again, it's quite reasonable to say that um, there would have been a little bit of light rust and dirt on there. But you know, again, they're, they're still quite new in the context of 1941. So. Um, Again, trying to sort of keep a balance there is the most uh, difficult part, I suppose. So it comes down to, you know, uh, a bit of feel for the subject. Um, but, you know, in the end, that this is kind of what I've, I've ended up with. I'm quite happy with it. I've decided to keep the um, external hose um, off its um, holders. Um, just to sort of, again, you can either model it to be prior to it going in or just after and they're reattaching them or taking them off or, or you know depending what they're doing but 
it's quite as I said in the last video it's quite reasonable to have that um, off uh, the holders there um, again um, if we look at the wheels I've used clear fix here uh, with some humbrol powders mainly um, some a light rust um, again a, a light rust wash uh, around um, the hubs of the wheels and on the uh, parts of the track um, as well uh, and I've done that around um, the vehicle uh, I, I didn't bother doing underneath as you'll notice there it uh, drags things out a little a little bit and I don't think anyone's going to be looking at the bottom of it so that quite happy with um, you know if it's meant to just be out of the water yeah you could put a little bit more mud on there if you wanted to not much of a big deal uh, at the front there you'll notice you know mud etc down the bottom so it's not rust it's it's mainly that sort of darkish Englishy sort of mud that you get from the from the beach I suppose um, and you'll see a bit of a white tinge particularly up here so that again that's trying just trying to reflect a little bit of salt that's dried uh, as it's come out of the water so you'll see some of the light patches around like in there and on top of the vehicle here that's just sort of to simulate a bit of uh, rust and a bit of salt and the two mixing together uh, things like that so again don't be too worried about it you know like in there um, of course the paint's been affected as well um, you know with like most things at the beach they tend to destroy beach tends to destroy anything made of metal um, you can see here a bit of uh, rust around the areas uh, light rust at the back there uh, and again just to simulate it that that full um, um, preparedness um, experience and I mean, a bit again on the cabling I mean when these things would have gone underwater a lot of this stuff would have been stripped is stripped off so you, your tools aren't there um, the tow ropes not there a lot of that stuff is actually added when it uh, gets at the other end of the beach I know later on in um, the east when they used them to cross rivers that they most likely wouldn't have taken them off um, but that was fresh water um, but again eventually if I get around to doing the diorama this is where I'll have the guy coming up and adding the jack on as if to, to quickly refit the vehicle because um, they, they wouldn't have come out of the beach deliberately firing um, but again it's quite reasonable that they can fight in this configuration if they have to um, but you know as, as, as soon as they are able to they would um, strip the vehicle back um, and then go I, I think you'll see a couple of a photo um, at the very start of, of my video that sees a Tausch Panzer going down a road uh, which would have been one that crossed the river not not the one from the ocean um, but again you know it's important not to get lost into too much detail you know it's what it's what's reasonable so am I am I kind of happy how it turned out uh, yeah 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 I am the um, again uh, I kind of wish I'd gone with the humbrol um, tank grey uh, particularly with the salt and that being added on uh, salt effect being added on it, it would have made it probably the delineation a little bit better um, but you know it's an interesting subject uh, I wouldn't say it was an, an easy build um, the difficulty level was kind of up there um, and it took time um, so you know particularly when you're looking at magic tracks um, to get I think the magic tracks turned out um, quite well um, considering look I I would struggle to sort of see the difference between them and Frules to be honest even just looking at them now with my eye so you, you know you can do a lot of work on those sort of areas but yeah look overall I'm pretty happy of, of how that would of how that eventuated um, and I tend to spend a little bit more time on some of the effects um, as well and some of the painting um, over say um, spending a lot of time on things like PE uh, etc because I think you know the painting can 
can make it quite lost sometimes so I'd rather spend the time trying to get the painting and the effects kind of right um, but without sort of going over the top and I don't think you really need to go over the top it's you know it's what's reasonable what, what you see from photos so look I hope you enjoyed this I've got a couple of stills coming up um, after this video you'll see at the end here um, again I've had some problems camera wise just ever since I put those powders on it looks probably a lot lighter in the photos than what it actually is um, um, so just bear that in mind when you see the photos but I, I tried a black background, a white background, a blue background and the black background ended up sort of being the best regardless of my lighting um, the lighting in some ways made it work worse because it would reflect off the powders and uh, would make it even wider so just bear that in mind um, when you see it. The, what you're seeing now should be um, reasonably accurate if, it, if, the, if you see a massive contrast between this and the stills Alright, so um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a comment. If you've got any questions, please um, ask questions as well. I'm happy to sort of answer those if I can. Um, if you can track one of these down, it's worth um, building uh, to have in your collection. A little bit different. Um, and uh, if you did like it, uh, uh, please subscribe uh, and or share around. Okay, until next time, um, yeah, I'll see you for some tiger builds.